Wooden utensils may date back to prehistoric times, yet today they're a popular cutlery option for the modern dinner table. Typically a high-end product handcrafted by artisans, wooden forks, knives, and spoons appeal to people who are drawn to the organic beauty and warmth of wood. Traditional in material, but modern in design, each of these wooden utensils is meticulously handcrafted from a single piece of maple. Maple is dense, so it doesn't develop cracks which can harbor bacteria. It takes up to 28 steps to make a utensil. First, a worker planes a maple plank to a specific thickness. Then they cut it into blocks the length of the utensil, in this case a fork. The worker places each block on a curved template and trace the curve, which matches the arc of the fork's handle. With a bandsaw, they cut along the trace line. The center of the curve runs parallel to the grain of the wood. This makes the handle and tines of the fork stronger than if the curve would run perpendicular to the grain. They clamp the block to another template and profile the curve on a machine called a wood molder. Then, with the bandsaw, following the curve, the worker cuts the block into strips a quarter of an inch thick. The curve is quite pronounced to give the fork an elegant line. They clamp up to 10 strips at a time onto this woodworking machine. Then, they start her up. Routers descend, and guided by computer software, simultaneously carve the strips into forks. After seven minutes, each curved strip, while nowhere near the finished shape, does have a defined handle and four tines. A strong squeeze snaps off the excess wood. Only small nubs of excess wood remain, which a worker now removes by running the fork against a sanding belt. From this point on comes finer detail work that can be done only by hand. Starting on a balloon sander, a worker adds or releases air, adjusting the inflation pressure to produce a soft surface against which to sand a curved utensil, and a hard surface against which to sand a flat one. Once they've refined the back of the fork, a worker manually sands the area that motorized sanders can't reach, first beveling the tines to sharp points, then sanding in between the tines. It's important to keep the tines thick so they won't wear out with use. Next, the worker sands the entire fork with a fine grit sandpaper to remove any faint ridges left by the balloon sander. They finish with an ultra-fine sanding to make the fork feel silky smooth. Now that the fork has its final shape, the worker stamps the company's logo into each handle. To ensure the top of the fork remains smooth, they soak it in hot water. This draws up the wood's short fibers so they can then be sanded down. The final step is an intricate hand-applied finishing process. Three coats of a proprietary mixture of food-safe plant oils, waxes, and lemon. Lemon works like a solvent, diluting the mixture so that it penetrates deep into the pores of the wood. After the last coat dries, a worker manually polishes the surface with an ultra-fine abrasive pad, sweep off any dust, then let the finish cure for 28 days. The finish brings out the grain and color of the wood. It also protects against food stains, abrasion, and moisture over the lifetime of the utensil. Wooden cutlery doesn't just look different, it sounds different. No ting of metal utensils on dishes as you eat. When dining a la wood, the only thing you'll hear is conversation.